sellers always insist that the home is being sold as is. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. The term as is is used a lot in real estate transactions and most buyers don't really understand what that means. Now, I just want to preface this video by saying I am not a licensed attorney and this should not be considered legal advice. Now, the term as is in a real estate listing indicates the buyer must agree to take the property in its current as is state. Now, technically here in the state of New Jersey, all resale properties are sold in as is condition with no guarantees or warranties implied or otherwise. However, in a traditional sale, these as is properties are subject to the buyer's right to conduct a home inspection and the seller's right to cure any defects found by the buyer during the home inspection. So let's dive into this just a little bit deeper. In a traditional sale, now when I say traditional sale, I mean that a regular person like you or me owns a home, whether it's our primary residence or an investment, and we're putting it up for sale and we're looking for another homeowner or investor to purchase that property. In those situations, the buyer and seller are going to enter into a purchase agreement and the buyer is going to conduct a home inspection. Now I have a whole video series about home inspections, I'll link to it above and below in the description. Go ahead and check that out. This is not a home inspection video specifically. Just to give you a quick overview, when you find any defects in the home, and now we're not talking anything cosmetic. Cosmetic is always as is. The seller's not going to change the color of the paint or the color of the tile or anything like that. We're talking about true structural defects or environmental defects or mechanical or functional defects, electrical, plumbing, things like that. Again, I go through that all in my video. Now, if you find any of those things during your home inspection as a buyer, what typically happens is you and your attorney will draft up what we call a repair list for the seller and we send it over. Now, the buyer doesn't have to ask for any of these repairs or they can choose to ask for one or two, however many they want. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, this is technically an as is sale. So the seller is really not under any obligation to fix any of these repairs. However, they do have the right to do so if they so choose. And sometimes this is just another round of negotiations. But taking traditional sales aside, let's talk about where this is more heavily used in the listing descriptions that advertise upfront in big letters as is. Now you'll see this advertised in the listings description, most commonly on properties such as foreclosures and REOs, short sales, estate sales, and it can even be found quite frequently on investment properties. So let's talk about these a little bit. You may even see in the descriptions of these particular listings, not only just the words as is, you may also see language in a listing description like this that'll say something like home inspection for information purposes only and buyer responsible for any town inspection, certifications, or certificate of occupancies. Now in these properties that are for sale where we're, they're advertising up front, this is as is, home inspection for information purposes only, etc. The buyer has to enter into a purchase agreement truly understanding that they are taking the property as is. It doesn't matter what is found in the home inspection, the seller's not going to repair it. They've advertised that up front. Now, as a buyer, you still have the right to conduct a home inspection. And when I write purchase contracts for my buyers for properties such as these, we do still reserve the right to conduct a home inspection because I think it's important that you understand what you're getting yourself into. This is one of the biggest investments most people make in their lives. You want to be protected. So you want to maintain the right to still be able to conduct the home inspection just to make sure you're not getting in over your head. But you have to understand at that point, you either have to decide you're going to move forward with the property truly as it is and all of the defects and repairs and issues that the house might have are going to fall on you as a buyer after closing. Or if you discover that there's just so many defects during the home inspection that you really just, you, you don't want to take on the house as is, then at that point you'll discuss your options with your attorney in terms of canceling the contract. If you've been following along with what's going on in the real estate market, uh, what's happening right now is we're very much in a seller's market. What that means is there's not a lot of inventory, but there's still a lot of buyers. There's a lot of demand and not a lot of supply. So right now that's giving sellers leverage. So what I've actually noticed is that on more and more traditional sales, sellers are advertising their property as is upfront, just because they hold all the leverage and they don't want to deal with the hassle of making any repairs. And when you have a lot of demand and not a lot of supply, I'm seeing a lot more buyers willing to take on the risk of a truly as is property because it might be their only chance to get into a home. So in a case like that, again, I'm just going to stress that you hire a really fantastic home inspector and fully understand the scope of what you're taking on, especially as a first time home buyer. 
Now, despite going through all of that, I still get two very common questions from my buyers about as is properties. Number one, is this home really as is? If I do a home inspection and I find out that the whole ceiling is about to fall down, the seller's really not going to fix it. They're always surprised by my answer. And the answer is no, the seller's not going to fix it. Now, I will say there's been extremely rare scenarios in some bank owned properties where the only way they were going to be able to sell the property was to make this repair or take a drastic cut in price. But you have to go into this assuming that they're not going to make any repairs. They've advertised it up front. We discussed it in the beginning. A lot of banks even have additional addendums that you need to sign when purchasing a foreclosure property, restating the fact that you know that the property is as is. And you have to be prepared if you find a defect during home inspection that is just beyond the scope of what you're willing to take on. You have to be willing to walk away. So my answer is always yes. The property truly is as is. And the second question I get asked a lot is, does as is mean I have to buy the house with all cash or can I actually get financing on it? The short answer is no, you don't need all cash to purchase an as is property. You can get financing on it. It really just depends on the current condition of the property. I've seen a lot of foreclosures and as is properties that are in really excellent condition that would qualify for financing. But you also wanna consider what kind of financing are you getting? Are you getting a conventional loan or are you getting something that has a little bit stricter guidelines like an FHA or VA loan? One of the things you do want to consider with your financing is if the lender is going to require any repairs be made to the property, then those repairs are going to fall on you as the buyer. And typically the lender wants to see those repairs done prior to closing. So for example, for an FHA or a VA buyer, a lot of the things that come up during an appraisal are safety things like handrails or cracked tiles or peeling paint even that comes up quite a bit. And if any of those issues come up at the appraisal, then you're going to have to make the repairs as a buyer before the lender will agree to lend on the home. This means that you're actually going to be spending money to repair a property prior to actually taking ownership of it. Now, sometimes the cost could be minor and maybe if the property is vacant, it's not really a big deal, but that is a risk versus reward decision that only you can make. There's also another step in the process with these particular as is properties that you as a buyer are going to have to invest some money in upfront. Now I can't speak for, you know, every state or every country around the world. What I can speak to is here in New Jersey, the state requires a minimum of at least a fire inspection on every resale property. That means it must be equipped with the proper smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and fire extinguishers. There's a cost to apply for the fire inspection with the town. And if the property needs any of those three items repaired or replaced, you're going to have to do that prior to the inspection in order to pass. The cost can vary town by town. I've seen 50, 75, $100. And then of course, any costs associated with buying the equipment to install in the home. Make sure if you're doing this that you're following the correct guidelines. And then one last step that's really going to vary um, on a town by town, city by city basis here in New Jersey is whether or not a further town inspection is required. Some towns call that a certificate of occupancy. Um, Some call it a certificate of continued compliance. Every town verbiage is a little bit different, Um, but here in the world of real estate, we use general terms of CFO, COO, or certificate of occupancy. Now that's gonna also vary town by town. Some towns have an extremely strict process. They have an entire list of items that they're going to inspect. It's basically like a little mini inspection on the home. And then other towns only have a few things they check, like making sure there's no open permits and things like that. So when purchasing an as-is property, it's important to talk to your real estate professional about whether or not this certificate of occupancy is required. Not only do you have to pay for the certificate and the inspection, but again, as I mentioned earlier, if there's anything on that inspection list, that needs to get repaired or replaced in order to pass, it's going to fall on you as the buyer. So there's quite a few upfront costs for a buyer that you're gonna have to invest again in a property that you don't yet own. So whenever I work with any of my buyers that are purchasing a property like this, I think it's important to set expectations up from the beginning and make sure you fully understand what you're getting yourself into. But like I mentioned earlier, sometimes the reward way outweighs the risks and costs involved. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. You know, every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work in Central New Jersey and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If you haven't already done so and this is something that interests you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. You know, I really enjoy making these videos for you and really my goal is to make the content that you're looking for and what you want. 
So if you have an idea for a future video or you have a real estate related question, reach out to me directly. I have all my contact information in the description box or feel free to reach out in the comment section below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.